Hi friends, welcome to the NPTEL course on entrepreneurship. We are in week 5 with the special lecture on electric scooter startups. The Indian automobile industry is an important component of the Indian industrial infrastructure. It also contributes significantly to the Indian economy. It contributes 2.3% to India's GDP. In 2018-19, the Indian automobile industry achieved a peak performance of 30.9 million vehicles in total, which comprised 4 million passenger vehicles, that is passenger cars and utility vehicles, 1.1 million commercial vehicles, that is small, light, intermediate, medium and heavy commercial vehicles, 1.3 million three-wheelers, 24.5 million two-wheelers and 5,388 quadricycles. The performance decelerated a bit in 2019-20 due to lower economic growth, but the further drops came when COVID-19 resulted in economic lockdowns as well as curbing of social mobility. In addition, Global economic factors and global supply chain factors impacted the supply chain in the overall with semiconductor shortage dictating the production levels of automobiles of various types. However, during this time, electrification of automobiles, particularly in the two-wheeler sector, has been taken up in right earnest. We have gone through in the main course that startups typically come with disruptive technologies and they can alter the industry structure once the technological developments become acceptable in the marketplace. At that point of time, the mainstream companies may choose to acquire those successful startups or start their own uh, similar activities or the startups themselves can grow into successful mainstream companies. Any of the three possibilities can occur. The Indian automobile industry is globally top ranked. It is the fourth largest in terms of the overall output. Many countries in the world have recognized the importance of electrification of the automobile industry. Many European countries have mandated induction of uh, zero emission vehicles in the new registrations as early as from 2025 and many companies are geared to do that in the European and US markets. Overall, the global electric vehicle sales reached 6.75 million units in 2021, which is 108% more than the 2020 level. A multi-government program called Electric Vehicle Initiative has set a goal of 30% market share for battery power car, buses, trucks and vans by 2030. To limit global warming below 2 degrees Celsius as per the Paris Accord, the world will need 500 million electric vehicles by 2030. India is planning to do its bit by accelerating the electric and clean energy vehicle transformation. This is evident from the figures below. In 2017, only 87,554 electric vehicles were registered in India. That number has jump tenfold in 2021. However, for India to be a leader in electric vehicles, a comprehensive and concerted policy initiative covering not only the original equipment manufacturers, that is the automobile industry, but also the battery industry, the component industry and the materials industry is required. Simultaneously, we also need a policy for establishing a national infrastructure of battery charging and swapping stations. The government has initiated several policy steps in this direction. Production-linked incentive schemes for automobiles and electric vehicles as well as batteries have been announced. The government has invited global majors to undertake manufacture of semiconductors in India. The government also has announced a policy for charging stations and for battery swapping. The Indian automobile industry should not be a skeptical or reluctant player at this important juncture. It needs to assume a proactive lead role in policy partnership 
with the central and state governments to design, develop and manufacture electric and hydrogen powered vehicles. In this developing paradigm, startups play an important role. And we take the example of two startup companies in the electric vehicle space to demonstrate entrepreneurship in this area. First, let us take a look at the current two-wheeler manufacturing infrastructure in India. I have listed here seven major two-wheeler manufacturers which deploy the conventional internal combustion engine technology. Of these, Bajaj Auto has been the oldest, having been established in 1945, even before the independence days. Other companies, Hero Motor Corp, TVS Motor Company, Honda Motorcycle and Scooter India Private Limited, Yamaha Motors, Mahindra Two Wheelers and Suzuki Motorcycle India came into being at several stages of the post-independent industrial development. The annual capacity at the moment is the highest for Hido Motor Corp, followed by Bajaj Auto at 7.5 million units, Honda Motorcycle at 7 million units and TVS Motor Company at 5 million units. Others, Yamaha Motors, Mahindra Two Wheelers and Suzuki Motorcycles have less than a million units capacity each. Let's also look at whether there are electric two wheelers actually developed and being manufactured in India. Hero Electric established in 2007 has already brought out seven electric vehicles. Some of them have been successful prototypes and some of them are still undergoing prototype development. It has good manufacturing capacity of 75,000 units. But given the status of hero group in the two-wheeler manufacture, I would say that it is a very conservative and careful outlook towards electrification. Okinawa Scooters is a startup established in 2015, which has established a 5 lakh unit capacity in Rajasthan. Ampere Electric is another company established in 2007 and has a facility in Ranipet, Tamil Nadu with 1 lakh unit capacity. Ether Energy by far has been the first boy of electric two-wheeler development, founded in 2013 from IIT Madras Research Park by two IIT alumni. It has two prototypes successfully developed and launched in the market. It has established a greenfield facility in Karnataka for 1.1 lakh units. Bajaj Auto, the famed icon of Indian two-wheeler industry, is yet to come out with a very strong electric vehicle policy. It did develop Bajaj Chetak as an electric vehicle, but the capacity is not very high. Given the overall scale of Bajaj Auto, it is about 5 lakh units in Akurdi Pune. TVS Electric has come into the electric vehicle race pretty late, 2018 to be specific, but is gearing up through a separate business vertical. Because this set up in 2020, is a company with a 80,000 electric vehicle target. Ola Electric by far has emerged to be the most aggressive and ambitious player in the electric vehicle market. Ola Electric is founded by Ola Group, which is uh, pioneering in terms of the ride handling business. Established in 2017, it has already developed two prototype electric vehicles and is in the process of setting up a 10 million unit mammoth project in Krishnagiri, Tamil Nadu. When you compare ICE and electric two wheelers, you will find that it is a kind of apple to orange comparison because the powertrains are completely different. Where while the ICE two wheeler is judged by the horsepower and the torque, the electric vehicle is judged by the wattage. However, what concerns the consumer is the maximum speed and the energy consumption. In this, there are companies which have got good speed capability, good gradient capability and also good uh, charge capability per kilometer. On the other hand, companies such as Honda have been working on making their products more powerful yet more fuel efficient. But in terms of the stance or the dimensional silhouette, you will find that the electric vehicles as well as the conventional vehicles are in more or less similar format. But what differentiates the electric vehicles from the 
conventional vehicle is the price premium that is entailed in the electric vehicles while ola has tried to bring a standard model at a price that is comparable with honda activa of course taking into account the incentives offered by the government other premium electric vehicles are at a price premium which is significantly higher the electric vehicle industry is going to evolve in terms of three specific steps one cluster will be the electric two wheelers and electric three wheelers and one may say that this group has taken very bold steps through the startup movement essentially but also companies such as mahindra and mahindra have made an entry into electric three wheelers the second leg of the electrification would be in terms of electric passenger cars followed by electric suvs and later by small commercial vehicles and light commercial vehicles eventually there will be hydrogen fuel cell vehicles powering the higher range vehicles but companies such as toyota believe that hydrogen fuel cell vehicles would be an appropriate alternative even for passenger cars and utility vehicles and they would have the additional advantage of retaining the conventional ice engine architecture so this is the way the indian industry is going to evolve in terms of electrification those who have taken my strategy and technology course earlier on nptel would recall my reference to meti a ministry of the government of japan that is instrumental in nudging companies in an industry to collaborate and companies across industries to collaborate a measure of that is seen in the collaboration that is being affected by the four big manufacturers of two wheelers in japan honda kawasaki yamaha and suzuki since 2019 these big four have been working together on swappable electric vehicle batteries and associated technologies they have agreed on a single ev standard that their batteries should meet it's a major step in india we are not at into that frame of thinking at all by november 2021 honda has been the first to unveil the new mobile power pack on march 30 2022 the companies announced their next move together with japanese petroleum company ineos they are establishing a brand new company called gachako and the purpose will be sharing of standardized swappable batteries for electric motorbikes and developing appropriate infrastructure to support the same china has been a leader in electric vehicle development and manufacture there has been a significant boost to ev manufacturing and ev customer acceptance in china thanks to the electric vehicle subsidies when the subsidies were introduced in 2009 they were estimated to cost the chinese central government more than 30 billion us dollars and local state governments were expected to spend around another 15 billion dollars but these subsidies have proven their worth the sales of new electric vehicles rose from just 500 units in 2009 to more than 3 million in 2021 and this number is expected to double by the end of this year itself having seen the emergence of electric vehicle industry on its own and the customer acceptance the finance ministry of china has now announced that the subsidies will be cut by 30% in 2022 withdrawing them altogether at the end of the year china has a 53% share in the global electric vehicle market which is followed by europe at 33% and by the united states with 11% as we are aware the leadership in electric vehicle market in usa is taken by tesla today it is a highly capitalized and super mega cap company but once it was a startup that started its journey on a very unique path of electrification and autonomy there are important technology considerations in electric two wheelers Conventional IC engine two wheelers utilize lead acid batteries which are easy to procure and cost effective. However, electric vehicles require lithium ion batteries and they are better in terms of range, speed and charging. How is high speed lithium ion battery powered scooter or motorcycle costs 
as much as two times the low speed lead as battery strapped version. Lithium ion batteries are definitely the future of electric transportation. Of course, research is also focused on getting batteries made out of materials which are more commonly available. The availability of subsidies and increasing efficiencies in lithium ion battery technology is encouraging higher application as we go forward. The voltage of a battery is a key differentiator in the electric vehicle because the battery design and the energy density impacts range, speed, mileage, price and weight. 48 volt batteries have emerged as cost effective and safe options as of now, but this energy density and energy capability would only increase in future. Battery developments require extraordinary performance. Recently, Tata Motors has introduced Nexon Plus, which has got much higher than the Nexon Basic, and it is a direction to which the electric creation is pointing to. We need lower power, lower heat dissipation, high reliability, high safety, and high service life to achieve durable sustainable high penetration of electric vehicles in the market. India has announced the faster adoption and manufacturing of electric vehicles in India for short phase 2 scheme. This was introduced to drive greater adoption of electric vehicles in India and it was launched with a massive budget outlay of rupees 10,000 crore in April 2019. The idea was to support 7,000 e-buses 500,000 e three wheelers, 55,000 e passenger vehicles, and a million e two wheelers. As against this, 180 models were covered under the FAME two scheme. Three 71,290 vehicles sold, and 1,400 crore of rupees was provided as total incentive amount. Now that this scheme is extended up to 31st March 2024 there is significant potential to utilize the balance money out of the total embodiment of 10,000 crore rupees for this scheme to kickstart the electric vehicle development not only in two-wheelers but also in various other segments of the automobile industry. A leading indicator is that apart from electric vehicles and cars, that is apart from electric uh, two-wheelers and cars, 6,315 electrical buses have been sanctioned to various state and city transport undertakings under the phase 2 of this scheme. This FAME 2 scheme has got certain important uh, factors. There has been a significant GST reduction of 18% to 5% uh, nature on charges. There is no license that is required to operate charging infrastructure and states have come up with capital incentives for setting up charging infrastructure and swapping stations. And also, depending upon the places where these charging infrastructures, charging stations are established, the subsidy element ranges from 50% to 100%. That graph is given here. There are also several town planning rules for provisioning of EV charging stations and a kind of standardization is being taken up under the auspices of BIS. Each state has come out with its own EV policy. An example is the Maharashtra state policy for electric vehicles to not only to encourage electric vehicles but also create a leading manufacturing and investment potential for the EV ecosystem globally within the state. It has a 1000 crore policy base to support it. Now coming back to Ather and Ola Electric, these are two companies which have been, uh, as I said, poster boys of electric vehicle movement in India. We have today more than 50 electric vehicle brands in the two-wheeler segment. Ather was an early pioneer. It was the first startup or one of the first startups to venture into EVs in 2013. It is Low backed by Hero Motor Corp. The company currently has two scooters on sale, 450 Plus and 450X. 
from a little over two dozen cities, Ether plans to expand to 100 cities by the end of the fiscal year 2022 to 23. Ether also moved its production to a new plant which has a capacity of 110,000 units a year. Ola Electric is at the other end of the polarity. It has been a late starter but moved aggressively into the EV space from 2018 onwards. It also has two models on offer, Ola S1 and Ola S1 Pro. Ola Electric is setting up what it claims to be the largest two-wheeler producing plant in the world with a single site capacity of 10 million units. Ola Electric is also significantly backed by Hyundai and Kia and it plans to get into electric four-wheelers also soon. These are the two founders of Aether who have come from IIT Madras and incubated the company in the IIT Madras Research Park. One of the important plaques of Aether has been the indigenization of the various components. The cells for the batteries are imported from LG Korea but much of the scooter otherwise is manufactured in India. Large bulk of the parts come from vendors in South India, even that the factory operates on a one-to-day just-in-time stocking system. And the batteries that will be produced will be little more than the electric vehicles to meet the servicing requirements. The Ether journey has been as follows. On October 20, 2013, IIT Madras alumni Tarun Mehta and Swapnil Jain start Ether Energy. In February 2014, Aether raises seed funding Dr. V. Srinivas of Aerospike and obviously has been a pioneer and visionary to have noticed the importance of electric vehicles and having made that investment, I am sure Aether will remember his very important seed funding that has happened. In June 2014, Arun Vinayak has joined as Chief Product Officer. In December 14, the company was able to raise its first large funding, $1 million in angel funding from the founders of Flipkart, who are entrepreneurs in their own right. In May 2015, it raised $12 million from New York-based hedge fund Tiger Global Management. In my previous course, you would have heard about Tiger Global Management playing a very big role in development of unicorns in the startup ecospace. In February 2016, it unveiled its first product, S340, at the Surge Conference in Bangalore. Noticing the emergence of Ether as a formidable developer of electric vehicles, Hero Motor Corp invested 205 crores in Ether. It also conducted beta test rides for S340. It started work on a factory in Whitefield where the bikes will be felt for the present. Then in 2018, it launched Ether Grid in Bangalore with charging stations at 14 locations and the updated models were also launched in that particular year and the deliveries commenced in September 2018. While the revenues increased from rupees 12 crores in FI19 to 49 crores rupees in 20, what is more important is that the vehicles have clocked more than 85 million kilometers without any accidents related to fires or any manufacturing quality issues, which is a great testimony to the robustness of the stage development process which Aether adopted. In 2021, the company signed a pact with the Karnataka State Government Agency for fast charging stations. It also began its operations at a new production facility capable of 110,000 vehicles per annum in Hosul. In May 2022, it raised its first large funding, 128 million US dollars from NIIF and Hero together. Wallace's approach has been quite different. Straight away, it planned an ambitious uh, manufacturing facility in a 500 acre site, which would also house two dedicated supplier parks. It is uh, going to establish over 3,000 robots in the manufacturing and assembly lines for efficiency. It has, like Aether, developed two principal products, Vola S1 and Vola S1 Pro, and the products are stated to be engineered and developed by Ola. As I have mentioned earlier, Ola was a leader in the Indian ride handling business. It is also a startup unicorn. 
what is important is that Ola visualized that electric mobility would be the future and began to spend as much as 2400 crore rupees that is 330 million US dollars on the 500 acre manufacturing complex. It will have the initial starting capacity of 2 million scooters a year but within one year the factory's capacity is expected to be jumped up to 10 million units. At its zenith it will be the world's largest scooter factory. As part of its ambitious charging infrastructure goal, Ola Electric is also planning to install more than 4,000 charging points for electric scooters across cities by the end of 2023. The journey of Ola Electric has been uh, straightforward as below. In February 2017, Ola Electric was incorporated. In May 2017, it started the pilot project in Nagpur. And in February 2019, it had its first major funding round of Series A led by Tiger Global and Matric Partners. In July 2019, a very important Series B investment was made by SoftBank. As a result, Ola Electric joined the Unicorn Club. Co-founder Anand Shah left soon after the funding as was the want with other founders of certain other companies which were going either IPO route or through extra funding route. In May 2020, the company acquired Etergo for an undisclosed amount. In February 2021, started constructing this giant manufacturing facility that I referred to earlier. In December 2021, after the unveiling of the booking process in August 2021, delivered first 100 scooters to customers in Bengaluru and Chennai. However, in April 2022, it recalled 1441 units due to safety concerns. We will discuss about the safety concerns of electric vehicles at a later point of time in this lecture. Ola has uh, conceptualized a hypercharger network. The highlights are start with 4000 charging points by 2023 and deploy them as standalone towers or as adjunct uh, charging stations in uh, popular energy service locations such as BPCL pumps, malls and IT parks and create an Ola hypercharge network that will help customers monitor the charging process in real time on the Ola electric car. Ola scooter also proposes to have a home charging capability, a simple plug and play kind of uh, arrangement by which the customers will be able to charge the scooter by plugging the scooter into the regular socket at their home. Ola envisages that the hypercharger network will be the widest and the densest electric two-wheeler charging network in the world with more than 100,000 charging points and across 400 cities. As you can see from this, whether it is the manufacturing capacity or the electric charger network, Ola is dreaming big. Ola is trying to scale up faster than anybody would like to believe and that is the passion and energy that is driving the founder at times putting the whole organization also into a kind of pressure cooker phenomenon. Ola Electric is it the appeal of electric or the power of marketing? When Ola Electric announced its plan to sell it surprised the market by saying that it would ignore the established selling through dealership model and focusing instead on the direct-to-consumer approach. This is the first time in the Indian automobile history to have a product like automobile getting sold on the internet direct to the customer. The booking process unveiled on August 15 received an enthusiastic response. The booking also enabled additional private equity investments into the company of course. Ola Electric eventually commenced the deliveries with some delays and in small lots. It doesn't appear that uh, the product has been supplied in thousands. Instead, a few hundred uh, lots were supplied to various customers. It remains to be seen whether this experiment of direct marketing will be successful and will be sustainable. Having looked at Aether and Vola Electric, in terms of strategy and technology, we can surmise that they represent two polarities. Aether clearly was the early pioneer. Having found out 
for itself the importance of electric vehicle development and having incubated the project, but it has been a slow developer. It is typically a first generation venture which had all the constraints such a venture would have and the scale consequently was one of modest scale. The funding was also modest and the challenges faced by Aether were those of a typically first generation startups. Ola on the other hand rode on the success of its ride handling business. It was a late follower. Five years later than Aether it came into the industry of electric vehicles but it has been an extremely fast developer. It is a second generation venture by the logic of uh, Olar Caps being the supporting foundation and it has come up with an ambitious scale for its project. Ola was characterized in its growth path by large funding rounds and the power of being a unicorn. The environmental push towards electrification which has decisively accelerated between 2013 and 2020 benefited all electric vehicle manufacturers in general but Ola has benefited in particular. There is also a question in the market whether Ola would launch an electric car and if so by 2023-24. It has announced that the electric car will in fact be launched which will be followed by autonomous car as well which is by itself a very ambitious statement to make. At present Ola is establishing a global design hub in Bangalore to be able to manage this. But if this is the future picture which seems to be very enticing and exciting, we also have the current picture where some of the Ola electric scooters like the other electric vehicle scooters caught fires and uh, this fire incident has raised a serious concern on design quality and safety standards deployed by electric vehicle manufacturers in general. There is certainly going to be a structural change in the Indian two-wheeler industry. Over the next four to five years, the transition from petrol to electric two-wheelers will be very strong, very clear and it will have two components. One is the partial substitution of the existing models and two the incremental market creation through demand elasticity. It is expected that the electric two-wheelers alone could generate a revenue of 30 billion US dollars by 2030 and that would entail an investment of 20 billion dollars over the next eight years. It is also expected that as the battery prices decline and as policy actions of governments around the world to tackle climate change will ensure better electric vehicle componentry and electric vehicle infrastructure. The shift from internal combustion engine vehicles will be certain and very noteworthy. But important factor will be the cost level. By fiscal 2026, the cost of electric two-wheeler and petrol two-wheeler should be equal resulting in around 30% lower total cost of operating an electric vehicle because it is much cheaper to run an electric vehicle for the consumer compared to a fuel guzzling two-wheeler. This would take the electric two-wheeler mix to around 35% of the market by fiscal year 2026 from the measly 1% that is there now. If the electric vehicle developments are so path-breaking that the cost of electric two-wheeler is in fact lower than the petrol two-wheeler, then the then sky is the limit for the electric vehicle models. Another important plank of electrification is the Make in India program. The government of India is taking certainly several initiatives to promote electric vehicles. It has been urging the local electric vehicle makers to curb imports of components from China and instead set up manufacturing facilities in India. The fact that the production volume is very low has been a factor in getting Chinese components particularly in critical areas such as batteries, battery cells, motors and battery management systems. However, as has been noticed, those components need not necessarily be attuned to the Indian operating conditions. India needs to have indigenous developments of its components. Another important factor supporting Make in India for electric vehicles is the entry of large auto players such as Tata Motors, Mahindra and Mahindra, TVS Motor and Bajaj Auto into the EV space. 
As we know, Tata Motors has already demonstrated its indigenous electric vehicle development capability in, an, in a convincing manner. The import duty on EVs is 100% if the CAF value is more than $40,000 and 60% if the CAF value is less than $40,000. Government can indeed invite foreign players with superior technology to set up units in India by cutting down import duties based on phased manufacturing programs. However, the manufacturers have to assure that they would indigenize their products completely or in good time. That is important. One of the reasons why Tesla has not been able to bring its car to India is the insistence by Tesla that the duties should be re reduced first before the car is tested and tried out in India and the government's uh, position, rightly so, that Tesla should signal its intention to manufacture in India before any duty relief can be considered. TVS has dedicated an EV focused vertical for electrification purposes. 1000 crore rupees will be invested in this new vertical and it will have its own uh, new plant. TVS is planning to enter all the possible segments including end-to-end -end delivery market which is a kind of a B2C market. Amazons and uh, big baskets of the world will be using these kinds of electric vehicles, commuter space, premium scooters and even high performance sports motorcycles. But the company has not yet given up on its ice powered offerings and both will run in parallel as the company says. There are definite risks to the electric vehicle strategy that are noticed in the emerging scene. First, the startups are adopting a greenfield and unconventional strategy. Typically, in the established automobile industry, it takes anywhere between two to four years to develop an automobile to exacting design, quality and manufacturing standards followed by appropriate homologation. Whereas the Indian electric vehicles are getting developed in super quick time and not probably with all the bells and whistles that need to be checked before the commercial launch. If Ola Electric is planning a full capacity of 10 million units from a base of just a few thousand units in 2021, obviously the strategy would carry serious risks. Second risk is trying to imagine putting it all together is same as manufacturing the vehicle in totality. Assembling an EV can be easy, but sourcing all the components including the critical components and scaling it up is a challenge which will test the managerial and supply chain capability of the company. Third and probably the most important is the engineering and quality dimension. EV makers must keep in mind that a good EV is always a good native EV. It has to be developed as a whole EV in its holistic system than as a kind of retrofitted scooter or a two-wheeler. It also needs to be developed keeping in view these harsh operating conditions in India and the power output and the battery management systems have to be matched to the Indian weather conditions. When the Japanese manufacturers wanted to enter the Indian car industry, they first conducted a very significant level of market research into the customer requirements as well as the driving habits and the operating conditions to customize their established designs to the Indian market conditions. Here we are indigenously trying to develop the two wheelers, but we are going by imported components, which is somewhat putting the cart before the horse. What we need to do is to develop the electric vehicles upfront with the Indian operating conditions and customer requirements in mind. The fourth risk is that the customers are being offered on a D2C model and the customers are not properly educated on storing an EV in their premises, in plugging and charging the EV in an appropriate manner, both in terms of the time and the periodicity of charging, and also the safety alerts that are required as incorporated by the manufacturers and as to be 
put in commonsensically by the customers themselves. It is the responsibility of the EV makers to educate people on every tiny detail to avoid problems that can occur. And as we know, some of the fatal incidents have occurred during the charging processes. The EV transformation will require massive EV engineering skills and that skill pool or the talent pool is not easily available. Not only that, the technicians and the roadside service mechanics need to be reskilled. With new startups pursuing ambitious and aggressive plans, retaining the talent is a challenge. While companies may poach, companies themselves could make life difficult for the professionals because of the aggressive and unrealistic timelines. Professionals typically follow a stage-gated process, stable process and graded process. So constant revamping of the organization structure with a view to get to the finish line all too soon may slow down or even halt the process flow. These are the five major risks that exist for the Indian electric vehicle strategy. We also must focus explicitly on the safety concerns, especially relating to the fires. The government of India has constituted a committee to examine why the fires occurred and the committee is reported to have submitted its report and the onus seems to fall on the types of cells that are imported and used the battery management system and the lack of design congruity with reference to the Indian operating conditions which are challenging. Therefore, the triggers for the fire accidents need to be transparently identified and corrective actions taken. We cannot have a situation whereby companies can think that one or two fire incidents here and there are aberrations and are not very material. I think the target of the startups, more so because they are wedded to innovative and creative technologies, disruptive technologies, should be to ensure that not even one fire accident would occur. Of course, the other reasons such as manufacturing defects or improper uses by customers should never be allowed to occur. The EV capacity certainly is bound to go up from uh, 2 to then a five-fold increase is likely to happen as, as for the EV capacity. That is from 2 million units, which Ola has, it is going to go to 10 million units. Similarly, Ether is increasing point, from 0 0.1 million units to 0 0.5 million. Bajaj is also stepping up from almost negligible level today to 0.5 million units in a good time. Together, therefore, there is going to be a significant capacity of at least 15 million units in a short while in the EV capacity horizon. But while trying to establish this capacity and utilizing it, we have to be wary of the setbacks to the startup ecosystem. I have already referred to the risks and perils of super quick launch and super quick scale up. We have to avoid inadequate design, procurement and testing promises. We should not over promise, we should not under deliver. We should take care of the talent, grow the talent, skill the talent rather than put them off by aggressive and unrealistic expectations and timelines. We should follow a very rigorous methodical stage gated way of functioning, particularly to ensure good engineering and good quality. Hyper competition is detrimental to the industry development. Needless and unrealistic competitive actions would dilute the core competencies in an effort to expand presence. The familiar startup model of buying market share market presence through discounts should be avoided. Unprofitable business models and operations should be aged so that the businesses run with positive cash flows than with cash losses. Over the last two to three years, liberal VC funding, liberal PE funding has made the startups splurge, over invest, over expend their monies. But that is going to all dry up with the changes in macroeconomic environment, tightened liquidity and also higher interest rates. We have to get out of the clouded mindset of excessive investments and expenses. And last but not the least, even a startup must have good governance. We should never allow poor ethical values and low governance standards at the founder and leadership levels. Lack of board process and governance standards 
are a weakness for the startups and a startup which incorporates all of these things from the beginning is bound to prosper in the long term. Therefore, to be successful as an electric uh, two-wheeler manufacturer or as any other technology-driven startup, the company should have the vision for the business and the vision should be beyond business itself. It should have a socio-economic purpose for the proposed business. In terms of electric vehicle, the socio-economic purpose is to lead to a clean energy movement to lead to net carbon neutrality. Sh there should be a nexus between creative technology and the business purpose. The business should be scaled up but in a sustainable way and the organization should be bound together not merely by compensation and incentives but by an inspiration that stokes the entrepreneurial passion in all the team members. This vision for the business must be followed by a very clear strategy for the business because strategy is the pathway for converting the vision into reality and to define the problem and solution perceptively. Strategy must prescribe a state-gated approach to build and grow business. For example, there must be a very clear manufacturing strategy that supports the product strategy, a very clear uh, supply chain strategy and a very clear quality strategy. All the four are essential for the product to be developed on the right lines. And strategy itself should serve as the template to monitor and course correct the entrepreneurial journey. And finally, there should be the execution model for the business. Every startup would like to be the first to the market, but what is required also, probably more so, is the right to market. Being right with the product to the market, both are important. The other important aspect is that all competitors tend to have a similar vision and strategy, except for the scale related to the finances. The real differentiators need to be discovered for such group of companies in similar conditions. And that differentiator is going to be the USP for the company. The third aspect of execution is the optimal deployment of resources that would lead to a model of operational excellence. And finally, the risk reward balance in the entrepreneurial journey has to be determined. Ether has taken a slow route but obviously it has made a determination of the risk reward balance in the entrepreneurial journey and who knows the company could be more profitable and more stable than other more aggressive companies with much higher levels of scale and speed. Leadership and governance must work hand in hand. Vision strategy and execution as I said are important but equally important are governance, ethics and compliance. Together the company in the electric field at least would be able to become a very high class ESG compliant that is environmental empathy, social responsibility and corporate governance imbibed company and it could rank very high because the business intrinsically is one of eliminating carbon content and reducing the pollution levels in the society. Given that major plan, an electric startup has got all the potential to be top rated for the ESG which qualifies the company for additional funds. To be able to do that, these three pillars on one side, vision, strategy and execution and the governance, ethics and com compliance pillars on the other side are essential. So this takes us to the entrepreneurial journey which the main course has talked about. We should start with the entrepreneurial call and passion, which is not only business, but it is business plus the socio-economic purpose. Then we need to identify the problem faced by the market. The problem faced, high fuel costs, the regulatory mandates and the problem of un being unable to contribute to the net neutrality by an individual who buys the automobile. Therefore, electrification is a creative solution. There could be other creative solutions in the dream, such as the flexi-fuel engines and in the long term it could be hydrogen power vehicles. So, design the creative solution in an appropriate manner and keep accessing technologies that enable the product or service. When you say accessing, it is not necessarily importation, it could be 
and it should be indigenous development and given the kind of canvas that has been already painted we need to raise the appropriate resources because that is what is going to determine the scale and attract the right talent but at the same time understand the limits to growth just throwing in people is not going to lead to results putting people as per a good organization structure and a talent management framework would result in an appropriate level of growth and then execute nimbly and a key aspect in this is to convert the product strategy into a successful business model and lead to successful commercialization and operational excellence together with strategic excellence will lead to competitive advantage that is sustainable and to be able to achieve that we need to have a very professional organization and eventually for sustainable success the company has to take the lead in creating an overall entrepreneurial ecosystem of electrification involving all the stakeholders whom we have discussed the government bodies the public sector undertakes in the energy field the private sector energy companies the component makers the material suppliers the transportation logistics providers the facility makers the manufacturing equipment pro providers in fact everyone has to collaborate and create a new generation zero carbon entrepreneurial ecosystem to be able to fulfill the full potential of electrification in the indian automobile industry and this is the point of inflection for the indian automobile industry which could further cement its role as a global leader in the automobile business in the world So with this I close this lecture thank you very much for your attention